And just into the newsroom this morning, the City of Scotts Bluff Transportation Department, in conjunction with BNSF Railroad, is advising that the 5th Avenue Railroad Crossing IC is closed for emergency repairs that will hopefully be completed this evening around 6 o'clock Mountain Time. In the meantime, detours will be placed and alternate routes will be necessary. And here's meteorologist Justin Kraft. He joins us from the Weather Center with a preview of weekend weather conditions. Thanks, Victoria. Right now here in the Panhandle, continuing to see that cloud cover and those rain and thunderstorms starting to move through. And with that, temperatures in those 50s, 54 in Kimball, 55 in Sydney, uh, 59 in Scottsdale, 51 in Alliance, and 52 in Gordon. And with those temperatures, winds are blowing in from the north at about 20 miles per hour across the viewing area. And it looks like for the Panhandle for this weekend and then for Monday to start this week, going to see the rain and thunderstorm sticking around for tomorrow and Sunday, and there is a potential severe thunderstorm watch in place for the Panhandle as well for tomorrow night into Sunday morning. So make sure to have your umbrella with you this weekend, and then it's going to be very nice to start next week for our Monday in the Panhandle. So that's it for weather. Back to you, Victoria. Thank you, Justin. And these nicer days could be leading to more pets going on walks and spending more time outside. But people and pets aren't the only thing that's coming back out for the nice weather. Ticks are back outside and parents and pet owners need to be aware when coming back in from a day out in nature. Entomologist Jody Green with Nebraska Extension says now is a good time to start being vigilant. She says the warmer than usual winter gave ticks a head start. They've started, they're out in full force. They can be active all year round if temperatures are above uh, freezing and there's no snow on the ground. So we didn't get a lot of snow and, um, you know, they, so they have been active. Green says if you go out in nature to remember to cover up and toss your clothes in a dryer. Now here's a check of sports. We're joined by KNOP Sports Director John Clanton. Track and Field Conference invite. Bridgeport and Kimball both in track and field action out in Hershey. This is the girls' pole vault, and here's Kimball's Clarica Hotel. She clears the bar there. She would finish third overall on the day. Boys high jump now, Kimball's Braxton Miller, the nice jump for the Longhorns. Third place finish on the day for him. Bridgeport's Zachary Jeffords, the nice jump he would finish second on the day. Here's a look at the final team standings from the SPVA track and field conference invite meet. On the girls side, Bridgeport's Grace Dean earns wins in both the shot put in discus as a team, the Lady Bulldogs taking fifth overall, while Kimball's Addison Olsen also earning conference titles in the triple jump and the high jump. Longhorns take home six overall. On the boys' side, Bridgeport and Kimball also taking home fifth and sixth place finishes. Great job by all of the athletes out in Hershey on Thursday. And finally, sub-districts for soccer now set for both Scotts Bluff and Gehring. Sub-district B8 for the girls will be in Scotts Bluff. The top seed, the Bearcats, and they will take on Holderidge Monday. Garing, they are the two seed, and they will take on Lexington also on Monday. Subdistrict B8 for the boys will be in Lexington. The top seed is Lexington, and they will take on Garing Monday. While Scott's Bluff, they are the two seed, and they will take on Holderidge also on Monday. The winners of the semifinal matchups will meet on Tuesday for the sub-district title. That's all from the sports desk. Everyone have a great weekend and see ya. Thank you, John. And in state news, the legislative session is out, but as Governor Jim Pillen signs bills into laws and vetoes others, those policies are on their way to taking effect. And one of those recent vetoes is drawing some serious pushback. LB 25 would have allowed for lawsuits to be filed against school districts or entities like cities if they fail to act on suspected claims of child sex abuse or assault. And its champions, like state senators Justin Wayne and Danielle Conrad, say it was all about holding government accountable. We sat down with a person who's been fighting for a bill like this for years, ever since she says her daughter survived sexual abuse in an educational context that was supposed to have more supervision. 
It's never been about us making bank. It's been about accountability to get policies changed, to get uh, her the physical therapy that she needs. Pillen says that there are already civil remedies available in these instances and that, quote, we must hold perpetrators accountable and protect children from abuse by enforcing criminal laws that exist and by targeting wrongdoers, not taxpayers. Conrad has vowed to fight for a bill just like this next, next session. And it was a controversial move in the legislature this session, a bill to replace the existing school choice law set to go before voters in November. Governor Jim Pillen signed this new version into law this week and opponents say they're not giving up their fight. This reporting comes from the Nebraska Examiner. The effort was once again spearheaded by Senator Luann Linehan, and this replacement devotes $10 million to the state treasurer to dole out scholarships to students looking to attend private schools. The NSEA launched a successful petition drive to get the previous version on the ballot for voters to decide its fate. It's unclear what will happen to it now. NSEA has vowed to push back, calling this new bill a slap in the face to voters. And recently, the White House made a major impact on the nursing home industry by announcing new staffing requirements. Within the next two through five years, nursing homes will be required to have a registered nurse on site around the clock, leading to U.S. Senator Deb Fischer wanting to create a provision that would better fit the state's needs. To make matters worse, this mandate is not funded by the federal government. On a national level, the, the rule actually estimated it would cost $4.3 billion annually. So if you look at a state like Nebraska, you know, how that could impact us could be significant if suddenly we're having to pay for all of these RNs. However, they, there aren't any RNs. Carpenter says because there is a lack of registered nurses paying at this, mom at this point is mute, adding if it stays in place, many rural facilities will have to close. And that's all we have for now. Remember to join us each weekday for KNOP's Panhandle Roundup, covering the stories in the Panhandle that matter to you. Happy Arbor Day and have a great weekend.